Hello friends, this is Jewel Humphreys. I think I find I'm grateful that you tuned in on me for another short message and it's one that I believe that the Lord has given me. And I want to speak to you on the on the subject of the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now in the original Sabbath was on Saturday. And uh, we know that on the on the last last day of the week the Lord stayed his hand on creation and rested and he appointed under the one of the Ten Commandments that we have a day when we set aside as a Sabbath day to rest and to worship the Lord. And so that's very important. I think we need to recognize now why we worship as Christians on uh, most of us worship on Sunday. And we do that because Jesus came out of the tomb on Sunday and then when he met with his disciples, he'd always meet with them according to the scriptures on Sunday. And then in the, in the epistles of Paul, as he writes in the New Testament, it states uh, that they met on the first day of the week to worship God. And so we believe they changed that Sabbath day to Sunday because it honors the Lord and his resurrection. And so anyway, the Bible says in that 10th commandment, and we're in Exodus in the 20th chapter, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So we need to keep the Sabbath day holy. Now, what do we mean by being holy? We need to keep every day holy, but the Sabbath day is a special day in that it represents the resurrection of our Lord and the life of Christ in heaven interceding for us. And so one day is coming back, hallelujah. And so let's remember to keep the Sabbath day holy as best we can. And that means that, that we need, there's two ways, that several ways, but two in, in the short time that we have, two ways that help us to see and keep the Sabbath day holy. One day, one is rest. Now the Sabbath was set aside in part for rest. And we need a day of rest. You that labor all week, you need a day when you can set aside for your for rest, for your family and your friends and your time when you can just relax and, and rest phys physically but, and mentally uh, before going back to work on Monday. But on the other hand, rest is important to the spirit and the soul. The Bible speaks of a rest that is, that is eternal and spiritual and we need to see that that's over in the book of hebrews and the bible says in that uh, there is a rest that remains for the people of god and they 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 who enter into this rest rest from their labors as god did from his and cho and uh, choose his grace and so this rest is not only physical but it's spiritual you need to rest, that is, you need to become a Christian and set aside your life for the Lord and to live for Him. And there's a rest when that happens. There's a rest of soul. Uh, Jesus said, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. And uh, learn of me, I am meek and lowly of heart, and ye shall find rest unto your soul. And so not only is He talking about a rest for your body, and your physical body. But he's talking also about a rest for your spiritual life, for your eternal soul. And you find that when you find Jesus Christ. And you find that when you know the Lord. And when you believe in him as your Lord and your Savior and your God. And that's important. When you believe that, you're believing the truth. And so it's an important thing that you learn to rest. To rest over in the in the book of, of Psalms 37 and, and 7, it says, Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. And so there's a good scripture, rest in the Lord. Now, I'm talking to somebody right now that needs that word. You're concerned about this or that. You're really, you're really tied up, so to speak, and you are stressed out. And you're worried about the, this thing or that. And the Bible said, God speaks to you. And he says, rest in the Lord. Rest in him. Now, if you can't rest in your finances, 
if you can't rest in the debts that you owe, if you can't rest in this situation that you're facing with other people, you can rest in the Lord. The Bible says rest in the Lord. That is, trust in Him. Believe in Him and call on Him. Pray and talk to Him. Tell Him your needs and praise His name. Tell Him you love Him and you believe in Him. Oh, praise the God of heaven. Give Him your heart's desires and He will answer thee. He will give you what you need in His own time and in His own way. So be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Look to Him and live forever. You're on your way home. Don't look back. Don't look down and say, I can't do it. But look up and say, I will do it because the Lord is with me. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. We need to wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and He'll renew your strength. Wait on the Lord and He'll mount, you'll mount up with wings like the eagle. Wait on the Lord and you'll fly above your problems. And wait on the Lord and you'll run and not grow weary. You'll keep going. You won't stop and say, I can't make it. But you'll keep running, you'll keep walking, and you're not going to faint and you're not going to stop. This is the way of the Christian. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him. Sometimes you have to be patient in waiting. That is, He doesn't answer or He doesn't come in the very next hour that you're praying. But He may come like that often. He may come suddenly, even as you're asking Him. But then again, you may have to wait a while. Wait patiently for the Lord, and He will bless your life. He will bless you. Finally, over in the book of Hebrews again, the ninth chapter, it says that you are to live so as to promote love among yourselves and also not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is since you see the day approaching. So do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. On the Lord's day, it's a good time to come together as Christians to worship God, to worship God, to rest and to worship. And we worship Him by, by prayer, we worship Him by reading the Bible. We worship Him by loving Him as best we can. We worship Him by telling others what a great God He is, what He's done for you. We worship God. We worship God just by looking at Him up and saying, Lord, I am I'm yours. And I sing. I go to church and I worship God, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together, but you're coming together as a people of God, to worship Him, to worship Him. Amen. And that's important. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. And if you possibly can, find you a good church where you can go and find rest spiritually and find that time to worship God. Oh, <clears throat> we have come into His house and gathered in His name to worship Him. We have come into his house and gathered in his name to worship him. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship him. Worship Christ our Lord. Let, let forget about yourselves and magnify his name and worship him. Forget about yourselves Magnify His name and worship Him. Oh, forget about yourself. Magnify His name and worship Him. Worship Him, Christ the Lord. Amen. Let us do that. Gather in His name and worship Him. Praise the Lord. We need to do that. If you need to pray, pray a brief prayer with me to be sure that you're all on your way to heaven. And just say, Dear God, please forgive me. I believe in Jesus. I believe He died for me. I believe He rose again. I believe He's coming back. Come in my heart, Lord Jesus. Help me live for You. Amen. Amen. Pray a prayer like that and then find you a good church where you can go and worship with His people. Become a member of that church. And you do that by being baptized. May the Lord bless you. 
And you, dear Christian, remember this. Do your best to keep the Sabbath holy by rest in the Lord and by worshiping Him. God bless you. God loves you. And I love you. Amen.